Hey guys, this is Kabato7 here of the 4th Battalion 39th Infantry Army 2 Realism Group. Um, I'm doing my very first uh, weapon review for today. This is going to be a long going series of the overall uh, weapon itself, including the optics, uh, the weapon's accuracy, and the human friendliness of the weapon, being like the weight, mag capacity, and size. Let's go over basically what each of those include. The optics itself, what I want to go over is the range of the optics, like how far it can see, um, and basically the. Uh, for example, like the RCO itself, if we get into the uh, the sights of the weapon here, let me get out of my friggin' alt tab view. You will see that it gives a tunnel vision view, uh, but it also can see at long distances. That's the type of thing I'm talking about as far as like uh, range and stuff like that. Um, the situations that it can be used in, um, as far as close quarters or long range or medium range or anything like that, and the difficulty of it to use. Like if you think of the uh, SVD or the Dragon of or something like that, that how difficult those sites are to use um, That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about with that and then we get into the weapon uh, as far as the accuracy of the weapon at range the uh, Firing modes that the weapon includes uh, and the recoil of the weapon as well And also the damage of the weapon because different weapons do different damage to people um, and then we get into the human friendliness aspect of it, like the weight of the weapon and being able to carry it around everywhere you go, the magazine capacity of the weapon of having to reload all the time or how much ammo you can actually carry for this, um, and then the size of the weapon, which also goes into the same thing we said about the optics uh, as far as being in close quarters scenarios and uh, things like that. So let's get started. First things first, just since this is the very first episode, I want to go over exactly how we'll be testing these things. You'll see down range, I have targets set up at 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 hundred meters um, and I will prove that in just a moment we'll be sitting up on top of that tower to be able to see down range um, the, it, it's a little bit off uh, by like five meters each but it's around a hundred meters difference per uh, but we'll go into that in just a moment so first things first we have a ladder here uh, and we're going to be judging these by different segments uh, you can see if I'm a standing target I'll put myself back to facing straight forward you can see that I'm about uh, one, two, three, four, five segments high when standing, maybe four when crouching, well, maybe like five and a half when I'm standing up, and four when crouching. Uh, and that's just how I'll, I'll be judging the recoil as per segment. Um, then we have a rampart here, which kind of demonstrates the same thing that these next targets are. It might even be redundant, but I'm probably just going to keep it anyway. Um, this is the first episode, so we'll see what happens. But the rampart itself kind of shows um, the height of a human body. It's a little bit shorter than a standing target, and it's a little bit taller, tiny little bit taller than a crouching target. But then we have these two targets out here, which accurately demonstrate a crouching target. And then we have one that accurately demonstrates a prone target. And we will be shooting at all these targets uh, with each firing mode um, up to 500 meters. And this is classified, I'm probably going to classify these things in as like uh, sniper rifles, SMGs, or assault rifles. Uh, and we'll do a different test for each one, but it will follow the same basis. For the time being, I'm probably just going to do a whole bunch of assault rifles and again get into the specialized weapons later. Um, but this is a weapon that is used by team leaders and riflemen alike in uh, the Marines and uh, Army in this game anyway. I'm not really sure the exact uh, weapons that they use. I'm pretty sure the Marines use the M16A4, but that's, that's redundant. Um, this particular weapon here is it's got a uh, RCO with no M203. Um, the team leader ones usually come with an M203 attachment. It's got the laser optic, and if we uh, pull up the RCO sight, it also has the over under uh, red dot, or uh, sorry, the red line. Let me sure what you call it. And that's just for close quarter scenarios. Um, and from here, we're going to get up into our tower and start the test as far as. Uh, the weapon aspect, the optics, the uh, weapon itself, and then we'll talk at the very end about the uh, the human aspect of it. Like, is it uh, user friendly per se, or how long would you have to uh, practice before you're capable of using it effectively? So let's start off with uh, 100 meters. We're going to try semi-auto and um, three-shot burst, and we're going to do this from a prone and crouched position per for each. I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but that kind of comes into uh, semi-auto and three shot crouched and prone for five targets so that's about 20 different I think I don't know my math's kind of off I'm sure but um, 
it, it's probably going to take a little bit, guys. So no worries. We'll start off with the very first one. Crouch position at the very first. I don't know if you can see it through the grass there. But holding our breath, we are in a crouch position. And one segment, or a little bit under. Of course, we have the human sway involved too, and I'm, that's just something the AI does. So that itself, even if you don't get a very accurate portrayal of how high it goes, it shows the uh, notorious M16 um, as far as uh, recoil uh, capability and recoil handling. It's a pin driver at this range, easily. Um, the optics itself, the first thing you'll notice is it seems a little bit uncomfortable. It seems almost like you're using a, uh, a sniper rifle. Um, and it doesn't give you, like here you can see the, uh, the oil rig in the background, but even if we're right here, even just next to it, you're tunnel visioned, you can't even see it. So if you were engaging targets at this uh, oil rig, for example, and I was trying to shoot at this guy, and maybe there were some guys over here who I was trying to keep my eye out on, I'd have to continuously switch back and forth to try and see the whole target, which is really annoying for a lot of people. So that's just something as far as the, uh, I suppose, what was I calling it just a minute ago? Um, let me look at my notes here. Um, the difficulty of the optics, like how hard is it to use? So um, let's get into engaging targets. We This is something I need to edit on the map, but you can easily see this crouch target here. Pin driver, very easy to uh, engage that target. And even if we do uh, three shot burst now, this is from a crouch position, held breath, and we got uh, maybe like a two climb there. But we are kind of spraying rounds here. For example, if I aim at the bottom of this ramp part, we decided how high that was earlier. Holding our breath now, no compensation. You're spreading it uh, along the entire length of the rampart. So, three shot burst might be effective at this range, but I'll say right now, I think three shot burst is only going to be effective in very close ranges within 100 meters, like even within 50 meters is probably where I'd use it. So let's get going with um, semi-auto on 200 meters. And that's a massive difference from what we had before. We'll go back to the 100 to show you. It's about maybe one segment, two segments high. It really depends on per shot. And I'm holding my breath the entire time. So I'd say it's an average of like a segment and a half. So we're going from 100 to 200 now. That is a massive difference. It's about four segment climb. And if we uh, shoot at even this guy's feet right now, we'll hold our breath. One shot puts us over his head. So you kind of have to compensa compensate with this rifle after uh, 200 meters. So let's go ahead and try to engage these guys quickly. Holding our breath. Ooh, what happened with that? That's a little weird. Let's try that again. So the optics are a little bit weird for me. Um, you're seeing I'm actually pinning on that target and the bullets aren't actually hitting right where I'm, I'm trying to shoot. So maybe we've uh, kind of busted a myth on the M16 accuracy, at least in armor. And the windage is probably just picking it up higher. Maybe that's what's going on. So we can hit the targets pretty easily. I take that back. Maybe I can't. Maybe it's just me. But I'll let you take that with a grain of salt. 200 meters having a little bit of difficulty but obviously it's a pretty clear sight picture it might just be the wind so let's go into 300 meters we'll we'll kind of uh, set that whole thing aside just for now for the 200 meter part because that's a little bit weird um, 300 meters we're gonna go in the segment uh, on the ladder held breath crouch position similar to the 200 meter test which is kind of odd isn't it 200 meter test it brings us up four 300 meter test takes us up too, huh? Now it brings it up. Maybe it's just something weird about it. So this is something that I'm actually uh, surprised about. The 200 meter and 300 meter test are are pretty similar actually, and the 100 meter test and the 200 meter test are drastically different. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to the targeting of uh, infantry since we don't have a whole lot of time. And here I'm aiming a little bit low just because of my uh, my wind differences there. So we can hit the targets pretty easily, it seems. So maybe it was just a fluke. Oh, got to reload now. So something we didn't do is test three-shot burst at 200 meters, I noticed. Uh, so sorry about that. 
I'm still getting into the grief of doing these things. So we'll let our guy relax, catch his breath. Now we're holding breath, crouch position, three shot burst. And now we're just spraying rounds. 200 meters out, we're spraying rounds. And I'll show you right now if we go up to 300 meters. You're just spraying rounds out in the background. The first shot's accurate, of course. But the other ones are not. So, I think we already did uh, the shooting test on 300 meter targets. Right? I'm a terrible shot, it seems, but... Now we're going to get into 400 meter. And you'll notice something on the uh, optics itself, if I put it up in contrast to the sky, you'll see the red peg, and then you'll see like a 4, a blank one, a 6, and then two more blank ones. That's 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So at 400 meters, we're uh, going to shoot with that bottom peg. Or that uh, Sorry, that second peg underneath the red. I'm having difficulties calming this guy down. So you can see that there's quite substantial recoil, and that just goes to show that three shot burst at this range, I'm, I'm tossing it above the length of the ladder at that third shot. So three shot burst at this range is simply not going to be effective unless you're just trying to spray, uh, and well spray and pray basically. And something about the M16, the reason it has these 30 round stanags is basically so you can uh, dump rounds down range semi-auto. The idea is if at first you don't succeed, just put another 30 rounds on it and you'll get him. So let's try this again. So my windage is a little bit off, but obviously with the weapon itself, it makes up for some of the uh, finickiness with the optics. Um, it's great optics. You can see the targets out at 500 meters. It's just a matter of hitting them with uh, such a weird kind of setup, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I, I will admit... Infantry has not always been my strong subject. I'm a uh, flyboy at heart, so with as far as I'm concerned, I'm used to being up in the sky. So you can, you're probably a much better shot than me, but obviously the weapon can let me hit targets, so that should be saying something. Um, so 400 meters, still accurately hitting targets. Uh, it might take me a couple shots to hit them, uh, but a recoil, as you can see, and that's without compensation. Um, you definitely need to uh, focus on that recoil. So last but not least, let's go 500 meters. Using that peg at the bottom, by the way, like I said, or the second one down this time. And you're seeing the sway right there that's without holding breath. That's with holding breath. So the sway is still pretty high, even if you're uh, in a crouched position holding your breath. Um, so that kind of comes into the uh, the weapon itself and the optics and the uh, whole human compatibility part. So let's try engaging targets. I think the wind is... Yeah, I'm shooting the right way. So you can still engage targets at this, this distance, but you have to account for windage at this range. I think all I'm doing is just suppressing him right now. So at 500 meters, it's pretty hard to take down a prone target. Um, I'm sure if I kept shooting, I'd hit him. But uh, all in all, it's still pretty effective. Most of the firefights that you'll encounter in Arma, unless you've got another mod enabled, are about 400 to uh, 200 meters um, in that range. And sometimes they get closer, sometimes they're further apart, but that's the, the average. So let's go prone and do a quick overview since we did the crouch position shooting. Uh, and then we'll just show the comparison to, for prone. And something uh, that I want to point out, the reason I'm not going to do everything with prone is because prone is always at more accurate w than... Um, crouched or, uh, excuse me sorry about that um, prone is always going to be more accurate than uh, crouched or standing position so here I'm going to let my guy um, rest for a moment that's after he's out of breath because I was just holding my breath the entire time and already you can see a massive difference in my stability so let's go ahead and take a couple shots one two and already second shot I hit so let's check the wind
Come on. There, I got him. So, you can put down a buttload of uh, rounds semi-auto. And I'm sure eventually if you put those accurately, then you'll hit. So. You're holding in your hand uh, 30 round magazines that are capable of uh, dumping rounds downrange. So, that's something that the weapon can compensate for the optics being really finicky, is that you can still put down a lot of range. Let's try uh, Burst Fire 500. So burst fire, I'm surprised. Um, burst fire, it's not nearly as accurate. You're still kind of spraying rounds. But let's try it at like 200 meters. If you're prone, burst fire is effective. You're still kind of throwing rounds around. I mean, if you look at the distance that these shots are going, you're still throwing it the entire length of his body. But if you're in that situation where you need to put rounds down range, it's nice to have that option. So that comes into the accuracy. You can take that with a grain of salt if you want. I'm still kind of uh, practicing my shots at these ranges. Not that I'm new to armor or anything. It's just that I'm uh, used to engaging within 300 meters. So 500 meter shots with this particular weapon, not exactly what I'm used to. So let's get into the lethality, if we may. Um, climb down the ladder. Um, something that we're going to talk about after this as far as the human uh, aspect is the weight so we might as well go over that right now bear in mind this rifle is about uh, 4.29 kilograms um, and it takes up not really a whole lot of space really um, as this one's particularly a long barrel so it's a lot more accurate at ranges but it seems to have a lot more recoil than the M4 which is something I'm going to go over a little later. So now we're going to do a little bit of a treasonous act. And um, I didn't want to do it against... Good morning, sir. Ah, good, good morning. You're both about to die. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to do it against civilians because um, I might actually do that in another test. But civilians are usually a uh, one-shot kill with pretty much anything. And this is without ace wounds enabled. Um, so that's something I might also change in the future. So this might be a test I have to redo in the future. But for now, it should account for something. These guys are armored individuals. Um, they're USMC Desert. So what we're going to do is take a, a shot with semi-auto or two or three, depending on how long it takes for this guy to go down. Uh, center mass and see how long... Uh, this guy can withstand the M16A4. One shot and he went down, no problem. So that was the same thing when I tested civilians, is uh, they went down to one shot. And I'm sure with ace wounds, you might have a longer lasting life, but uh, with the M16, it seems one shot just took him down. Let's try it one more time to make sure it's consistent. Yeah, that's a chest shot. So one shot center mass and the guys go down. We also have some targets out, uh, out in the range to our south, I believe. I have two targets out there. One's at 200 meters, the other one's at five. All right, well, we've got our guy at 200 meters now, so maybe we have a better chance. So at 200 meters, your damage is uh, reduced enough to only injure the individual. Now he's charging me. Stop charging me. So, that goes to show that burst is not effective. That and I'm a terrible, terrible shot. I don't know why he's thinking he can just charge me right now. I don't know if he's going to eat my face off like a zombie or what. But that shows at 200 meters, it's not an instant kill. Um, close range, it's much different. Now he's running around again. He's all scared, but let's try and actually engage this guy now. I don't know if I can do this prone. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. No, oh, it's going to be in the way. The wind's pushing the other way this time. 500 meter shot. One, cease fire. So, once again, I hit him in the leg, I think, because he just went down. I think that he's taking cover. But once again, at, at range, it's uh, multiple shots. So, it's a pretty weak round, um, considering you're engaging uh, armored targets. And all in all, I think that you would be able to uh, take those targets out if you were a lot better than me uh, at shooting. <laughs> um, I wasted pretty much a mag on that guy that was charging me, so I just need to practice with this rifle more. I'm used to using the holographic sight, so um, take that as you may, um, but that should show at least the lethality of this weapon. And let's have a quick talk about the overall uh, effectiveness of the uh, 
are the human aspects of this weapon. So we went over the range of the optics themselves. We went over the situations the optics can be used on, which is uh, the RCO is pretty much something you want to use past 200 meters all in all. Uh, once it gets close to 100 meters, um, I'll show you right now, it's, it's kind of uncomfortable. Uh, just given the fact that you're so tunnel visioned, you can only see like, uh, well, I mean, take a look. That's all I can see right there between the rampart and that prone um, target. And now look how much I can see just by even zooming in. Um, so it's it's pretty annoying to have that restriction as far as your sight goes, but it does allow in return you to be able to see targets up to 500 meters. So that's really nice. Um, as far as the difficulty of it, it is kind of weird to use because it's such a small, um, so small little pins, and even just the slightest shake can throw you off your target. But I suppose that could be said pretty much about anything. It's just it's just a really weird uh, type of optic to use. Um, at 400 meters, it's a pin driver. Uh, past past 400, I can't really uh, hit anything with it. So let's see if I can actually hit it this time. There we go. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of uh, semi low lethality of the round. I mean, it still killed targets one hit uh, at close range, and it injured the targets out um, past 200 meters. I didn't get a chance to see how many shots it would take to kill the guy, but uh, he's crawling right now, so that should show you. It's pretty devastating round at that range. Let's see if we can actually hit him. One, cease fire. So even after two rounds, he's still coming. I mean, let the guy relax. But all in all, while we're doing this, um, showing you the difficulty of the uh, the optic sight itself, the third shot brought him down. Um, it's got great range. Within 500 meters, it's pretty damn effective, but I don't think it'd be too effective past uh, 600, at least not in armor. Um, it, sh it shows that it's capable of going out at 800 meters, but I wouldn't think of engaging targets at 800 meters. Um, you're kind of just hoping for the best at that point. Um, the weapon itself is pretty goddamn accurate. I'm not the most accurate shot in the world, but I I'd imagine this thing would remain accurate uh, the, as far as the weapon's concerned, at about 800, but as far as the optics are concerned, not so much. Um, that being said, the fire modes and the distance of the weapon itself, let me adjust my mic real quick. Sorry about that. Um, I hope that wasn't loud or anything. It, my mic kind of screws up from time to time, but anyway, I digress. Uh, firing modes, um, close range, you can easily see. The burst fire is pretty much only going to be effective if you're using this secondary sight here, which is the over-under sight. And at that point, I mean, it's a great option to have, but at that point, you're still pretty much just spraying and praying. Um, so like I said, it's, it's a good thing to have, but uh, the recoil of this weapon was higher than I expected it to be, just given the fact that it's uh, such a small caliber round and the, the weapon itself is renowned for such uh, low recoil. The M4, um, like I said, this is the M4 is another weapon I'm going to uh, do in the future. But the M4, I could tell you right now, is a lot lower recoil than this. Damage-wise, it seems to be pretty effective, but I would uh, trust a 7.62 over the 5.56 in this case, just because it did take three shots to kill that other guy. Uh, and even though it was one shot at close range, I think the M16 is pretty much a close range weapon. Despite what you might think, the uh, M16A4 RCO is probably going to be your weapon of choice within 300 meters. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't judge it to be a terrible weapon past that range. But all in all, it seems to be a medium range rifle, not a long range rifle, um, like a lot of people assume that RCO to be. Uh, so 300 meters, I think, is, is around the effective range of this this weapon. Anywhere closer than that, you might be uncomfortable. Anywhere further than that, you might be uncomfortable. But 300 meters, where, which is perfect, actually. I'm not trying to uh, talk down about the rifle. Um, a lot of firefights, I think I've mentioned this earlier, happen at about uh, two, three, or 400 meters out. So at that range are those three in-between targets. And that's pretty good distance, actually, for, the, for uh, a firefight. Um, and it's very, very useful at that range. It seems to be deadly accurate and deadly as far as power is concerned, uh, especially at close range. It's got 30 round Stanag magazines and the magazines themselves, I don't know if I showed this earlier, but the magazines themselves are pretty light. They're only about uh, half a kilogram. The weapon itself is about uh, 4.2 kilogram, maybe 4.3 because it's 4.29 kilogram. And uh, all in all, that's extremely light for a rifle. Um, and as far as Ace is concerned, you can only carry about uh, 
25 to 30 kilograms before you start to become over encumbered and after that you pretty much can't travel too fast um, so all in all as you can see we can carry a buttload of ammunition for this deadly accurate at 300 meters and in that range and uh, still holds quite a bit of power minimal recoil at that range as well past 500 meters your recoil starts to become um, pretty difficult to compensate but then again you are semi-automatic so it's uh, it's weak past 500 meters in my opinion but uh, within the close range that we were shooting at pretty damn effective so thanks for watching take that with a grain of salt if you may um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this if you got any suggestions for weapons I should try just uh, go ahead and message message me on steam if you know my steam on the forums um, or even here in the video just leave a comment and let me know and thank you once again for watching and this has been weapons review of the 4th battalion 39th infantry peace